Welcome to this spoken tutorial on the Linux environment and ways to manipulate it. A working Linux system, preferably Ubuntu, will be required to try out the examples illustrated in this tutorial. We assume that you know how to get started with the Linux operating system and have some basic idea about commands, file systems and shell. If you are interested or need to brush these concepts up, please feel free to do so through another spoken tutorial available on our website. Please note that Ubuntu 10.10 .10 was used for recording this tutorial. Please also note that Linux is case sensitive and all the commands used in this tutorial are in lowercase unless otherwise mentioned. The Linux environment determines how the operating system behaves with you, how it responds to your commands, how it interprets your actions and so on. Linux can be highly customized by changing the settings of the shell. Let us understand how all this can be done. The behavior of the shell is generally determined by the shell variables. There are mainly two kinds of shell variables, environment variables and local variables. Environment variables, named so because they are available entirely in the user's total environment. These are also available in the subshells spawned by the shell, like the ones for running shell scripts. Local variables, which as the name suggests, have a more restricted or limited availability. These are not available in the subshells spawned by the shell. While in this tutorial we will mainly talk about environment variables, let us first see how the value of these shell variables can be seen. To see all the variables available in the current shell, we run the command set. Type at the terminal set space Python character more and press enter we can see all the current shell variables. For example, take a look at the home environment variable. Also notice the value assigned to it. Press enter to move through the list and in order to come out, press Q. Here, the output from set was pipelined to more in order to display a more systematic multi-page output of the variable list. To see only the environment variables, run the command env. Type at the terminal env space vertical bar more and press enter. For example, notice the shell variable here whose value is slash bin slash bash. Again, you may press Q to come out of the list. Now, let us discuss some of the more important environment variables in Linux. We would be using bash shell for all our demonstrations here. Different shells are customized in slightly different ways. To see what a variable actually stores, we have to prefix a dollar sign to the name of that variable and use the echo command along with it. The first environment variable that we would see is the shell variable. It stores the name of the current shell. To see what is the value of the shell variable, type at the terminal echo space dollar and s h e l l in capitals and press enter here slash bin slash bash is the shell where we are currently operating the next variable is home when we log into linux it normally places us in a directory named after our username this directory is called the home directory and this is exactly what is available in the home variable. To see the value, type at the terminal echo space dollar h o m e in caps and press enter. The next environment variable is path. The path variable contains the absolute paths of the directories that the shell is supposed to search for locating any executable commands. Let's see the value of the path variable. Again, type at the terminal echo space dollar p a t h in caps and press enter. On my computer, it shows slash user slash local slash s bin slash user slash local slash bin slash user slash s bin 
slash user slash bin, etc. This may slightly vary from one system to another. It is actually a list of directories separated by the colon delimiter that the shell would search in this order for finding an executable command. We can also add our own directory to this list so that our, our directory is also searched by the shell. In order to add our own directory, type at the terminal PATH in capitals equal to dollar PATH again in capitals colon slash home slash the name of my own home directory and press enter. Now if we echo the value of path Our added directory will also be a part of the path variable. See, the directory is now present here. Another interesting variable is the log name. It stores the username of the currently active user. In order to see the value, type echo space dollar log name and press enter. When we open the terminal, we can see the dollar sign, which is the prompt at which we enter all our commands. This is the primary prompt string represented by the environment variable PS1. There is a secondary prompt string also. If our command is long and it spans for more than one line, then from the second line onwards, we can see a greater than sign as the prompt. This is the secondary prompt string represented by the environment variable PS2. To see the value of the secondary command prompt, type at the terminal echo space dollar ps2 and press enter. We may change our primary prompt string to say at the rate at the prompt. Uh, in order to get this done, type ps1 equal to, now within quotes, at the rate and press enter. Now instead of the dollar sign we can see the at the rate sign as the prompt. We may do something more interesting like we may display our username at the prompt. Uh, just type ps1 equal to within quotes say do dollar log name and press enter. Now my username is my prompt. To revert back type ps1 equal to dollar within quotes and press enter. We have assigned values to many of the environment variables but remember one thing that these modifications are only applicable for the current session like we had just added our directory to the path variable. If we close the terminal and open it again or open a new terminal altogether and check the path variable by echoing its value we will be surprised to see that our modifications are no longer present. The way by which we can make these modifications permanent will be covered in some advanced tutorial. Often we want to re-execute a command that we had executed in the recent past. What do we do? Do we have to type the entire command again? No, there are a number of solutions. First, normally if you press the up key on your keyboard, then it will show the last command that you have typed. Keep pressing it and it will keep scrolling through the previous commands. To go back, press the down key. But when you have to scroll through many commands, this becomes a little clumsy and tedious. A better way is to use the history command. Type at the prompt history and press enter. 
see a list of previously executed command appears. If instead of the large list you want to see only the last 10, type history space and 10 and press enter. Notice in this list there is a number assigned to each of the previously executed commands. In order to repeat a particular command, just type uh, exclamation mark followed by the number of the command. For example, 442 in my case would execute echo space dollar path. If you need to re-execute the last command, simply type the exclamation mark twice and press enter. The next thing we would see is called the tilde substitution. The tilde character is a shorthand for the home directory. So say you have a directory with the name test tree in your home directory. You can move to it by typing cd space tilde slash test tree. One may also toggle between the current working directory and the last directory used by giving the command cd tilde minus or only cd minus. Like now that we are in the test tree directory, the last directory we visited was the home directory. So if we run cd space minus and press enter, it will go to the home directory. Run it again and it will take us back to the test tree directory. The last but quite important command we will see is the alias command. It may quite happen that you have a large command that needs to be run again and again. In this case, we can give it a short alias name and use the alias name instead to invoke it. Assuming that you have such a long directory hierarchy that you frequently visit for music, you may create an alias for it like this. Type alias space CD music equal to, now within double quotes, CD space slash home slash arc slash files slash entertainment slash music and press enter. Now every time you need to switch to this directory, simply write CD music and press enter. See, we are in the music directory now. Now you may type cd space minus and the prompt to go back to the previous working directory. To unset an alias, simply write unalias space cd music and press enter. Now again, if you fire cd music from the terminal, you'll get an error stating that command was not found. <coughs> Suppose we have two files, test1 and test2 in our present working directory and if we fire R in test1, test1 is silently deleted. We know that hyphen i option of rm command makes the removal process interactive. So we may set an alias like alias rn equal to, now within quotes, rn space hyphen i. Now when we run rn, rn hyphen i will actually be run. So we saw while test 1 was silently deleted, system asked before deleting test 2. So in this tutorial we have learned about environment variables, history and aliasing. This brings me to the end of this tutorial. Spoken tutorials are a part of the Talk to a Teacher project supported by National Mission on Education through ICT. More information on the same is available from our website. The script for this tutorial was created by Anirban. And this is Anubrat Parashar from Amity University 